Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and in today's video we are talking about the INTJ and their different subtypes. We are talking about the INTJ as you've seen them at their best and at their worst. Ever so often when people talk about bad experiences with INTJs, they are talking about this shadow side of the INTJ, this dark side of the INTJ. And it's important to be aware of this, but it's important also to be fair and to realize that all of us have a dark side and all of us have our issues, stressors and anxiety factors. And Awareness of an INTJ's anxiety and stress factors can help you manage these factors, can help uh, you as an INTJ know what situations to avoid and how to manage situations ahead of time. And it can help you, all of you that are dating INTJs know how to date INTJs better, how to uh, complement them rather than to feed into their stress and anxiety. So we know INTJs at the best are highly strategic, theoretical, philosophical, they are focused, they are concentrated, they are in many ways the great schemers of the world that can see and predict different ways the future could develop. They can predict what patterns and economical trends are the most likely to happen. They can predict which parties will do best in elections. They can judge characters. They can see who of you are going to become great musicians and who are not. They can tell very quickly who or how well you are performing at a task within a system that they are experts within. INTJs are terrific judges, amazing at Man enforcing and finding out how to manage and settle complex rule twists and juridical legal issues. INTJs are in so many ways brilliant and INTJs are at the same time so often troubled by a lot of issues that let's just say ESFPs won't be dealing with this. INTJs first issue is the issue of being a little distracted. INTJs are constantly working to avoid distractions and to maintain order and control and a sense of uh, security in the group. And INTJs can in some ways be described as a little paranoid around others. It can sometimes, they can sometimes have this stress of, uh, this anxiety of not feeling welcome in the group or this anxiety of not knowing what other people think about them. When social changes occur, INTJs can easily grow unsettled and read in power struggles or issues that aren't there. And INTJs can experience this loss of control that is important to them. And uh, managing this can sometimes be difficult for the INTJ. INTJs have other issues beyond this as well, in the sense that INTJs do badly in changing, rapidly changing environments, in raw physical reality. INTJs are not so often meant to be heads on, uh, hands on on the stage where everything is happening, where all the lights and all the noises. INTJs are and need so much time for meditation, distance, detachment, and time just to think, just to clear up your head, just to maintain your focus. INTJs are constantly fighting off that urge to give in to that stress and anxiety from the world, from all the things happening, all the things beyond your control. And sometimes INTJs have issues of retreating slightly towards a fantasy reality. INTJs are extremely rational types. Don't get me wrong, they're highly critical thinkers, they're good for turning and noticing when something is irrational and when something is rational. They are great for judging how rational or how pragmatic a solution is going to be, how good it's going to work in practice. But under stress and under anxiety, all of this tends to go away, and INTJs have this inner emotional self that they are always struggling with knowing how to deal with. INTJs will be looking at their inner ESFP shadow self and they will be looking at it and all of these functions, introverted feeling, extroverted sensing, and they will be constantly dealing with managing these sides, managing these impulses. For example, INTJs can have issues of constantly reinterpreting what other people are telling them to be hostile or negative or to be attacks on their character when it isn't. INTJs may read in power struggles where there are no power struggles, but they can also call out power struggles where there are power struggles. And INTJs are far from melodramatic types compared to, for example, INFJs and INFPs, but 
they are and they struggle with isolation. They struggle with uh, pulling away from the world and uh, retreating from the world into a fantasy reality construct. They have this conception in their head of a world where everything is perfect, accurate, realistic, and according to perfect laws, but often these laws don't exist in reality, and often there are things that are going to work that you don't think should work, and uh, there are things that are not going to work that you think should work. And how can an INTJ deal with all of this? Well, first and foremost, I think recognizing what gives you energy and what gives you motivation, what you do to reduce stress, and what you do to stay on top of anxiety. First, meditate, distance yourself, detach to see clearly. If you start losing control and start getting uncertain of what other people feel, take a step back, look at the big picture, look at what your inner self tells you. If you start feeling stressed out, take some time to organize your thoughts, compose yourself, control yourself, focus, concentrate on what's important and what is the uh, first thing you can do first. When you need to set boundaries, tell people what you can do and what you can't do. Because often I think INTJs are constantly asked by other people to help them. All the time people are asking INTJs to help them. And uh, INTJs, uh, well, because they have so many gifts, so much things to teach others, so many things to offer others, I think that sometimes they can be a little overwhelmed by this. What partners of INTJs will realize is that INTJs do need a lot of time to go out there and to help the other person. They might not always give a lot of validation to the other person, but they will eventually come and do what they can to make the situation better. And here's the truth about INTJs. INTJs are going to be highly loyal people in relationships. INTJs are going to be rational, be sane, be calm, be clear-headed. They won't use social intrigue against you. They won't conspire against you. They won't go behind your back. They will be people that generally are very clear with you and how they feel about you and what they expect from you. And they will tell you just as well when they feel disappointed in you or when they feel that uh, they've been wronged by you in some way. But the truth is not all INTJs are going to be able to manage this. And at times we will switch. You will fall into either the INFP subtype or the ESTJ subtype. And it should be said that the INFP represents the more childish INTJ version. The INTJ that has a lot of energy and has a hobby, but not a clear purpose or motivation. It's going to be the INTJ in school. INTJs in school are a lot like INFPs. They are the people that are going to be uh, sidekicks in many ways of the word. They will be the people that are working for someone else or for helping someone else or for appreciation from others rather than from inner fulfillment. These INTJs, uh, if they grow on to get careers in these fields, will often come to be counselors, therapists, and people that have worked to be of aid to other people, who have uh, developed methods to be listeners, to be aware of others, and to become more sociable with other people. This is an unusually highly social line of, uh, INTJ. And an INTJ that struggles the most with being a little more sensitive than the average INTJ. The second INTJ is the ESTJ. And this is the INTJ that has gotten more overwhelmed by the world. They are thrown into something and they've lost that sense of clarity and focus. And they are, in more senses of the word, going to be at least highly self-disciplined, often bodybuilders, often people that are pushing themselves to the limits, often people that are taking on high challenges towards a purpose, I think something that they feel is highly important in their life. Maybe they have dived into something that gives them a lot of passion or a sense of value. They found something, thinking, judging, programming, structure, being architect, something that requires them to go out of their comfort zone. And they do so, and they do so valiantly in many ways. They are the mentors of the INTJs, or the parent archetype of the INTJs, the INTJs that are going to be putting themselves and their own joy and passion for a greater good, something they find is to be of greater value than their own personal energy and enthusiasm. 
when in the ESTJ subtype, just realize that you do not do well, you don't perform well in a manager, micromanager role. You are and need to be in the role where you can provide a big packed picture leadership uh, of the group. You need to focus on the group's longer perspective, their vision, their strategy, and how to get there. You will need to be the person that can look detachedly at people's strengths and weaknesses. You will need to like Miss Sloan did so excellently in a recent movie, Miss Sloan, find a way to use people's weaknesses and abilities and gifts towards your purpose without stepping too deeply into and uh, working too hard on the individual person and the group in itself. So finally, what are the INTJs at their worst? What do they look like? Well, first and foremost, they go into ES, they go into extroverted sensing and sensing perceiving, and they become restless. You'll notice that unlike the ESFPs, they are going to be looking around them, they're going to feel paranoid, they're going to feel worried about everything and everyone, but they are going to look so anxious in this role, unlike the ESFP that will look happy and calm and centered in this role. The INTJ in this role will seem overwhelmed, they will have lost perspective and clarity, they are... Uh, they are getting a lot of information, but they are at the same time simultaneously detached from it. They are taking in more than they can deal with and process in time. And this is starting to hurt their judgment and their perspective and their overall clarity. They're constantly going to be helping other people, but they're not going to appear happy about it. They're going to feel like they constantly are undervalued by others. They're going to be needing a lot more appreciation and love from other people because they don't find that in themselves. They're going to feel overwhelmed by people's expectations on them, or, and they will service with a smile, in a sense, taking on that death stare smile while doing something they don't like to do. The, these INTJs are going to be more than overwhelmed by other people's social signals and they're gonna constantly see social signals that aren't there. They're gonna read in things to relationships, they're gonna get the ideas, they're gonna struggle to tell apart what a person really means and what they are and don't mean. So what you can do is, if you notice an INTJ starting to act like this, is just take a step back, just sit down with them, give them a chance to breathe, give them a chance to clear their head, give them a chance to give, get balance and peace and Tell them to and find ways to reduce their stress, find ways to get them to get perspective and organization and order in their lives. Give them something they can have control over, something they can touch, something they can feel is for real. Give them something that uh, can uh, restore their reason and their high critical thinking skills. Give them something they can test, give them something they can study, something they can read about, something they can learn about and master and become the best at. INTJs really do need to feel valuable, they really do need to feel like they can do something that nobody else can, that they have a field of expertise that nobody else has, that they are good at something, accurate at something, better than anyone else. They need to feel that reassurement, and if they don't, that's when I think their shadow side starts to bubble up. And yeah, INTJs, you don't need to be religious to understand that you need Zen. You need time to listen to maybe a relaxing music, to go out into a park, to sit down, to breathe, to get that sense of calm and stability.